<clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to SciShow Quiz Show, the quiz show that is on SciShow. My name is Michael Aranda. I'll be your host today. And today again, we have uh, Hank. My name is Hank. My name is Hank Green. Sorry, I didn't know who you were. <laughs> and as always, we have Caitlin Hoffmeister from SciShow Space. <laughs> Uh, Hank, Thank today you. you will be playing on behalf of a one Sean McClellan. Sean, I'm here for you. I just lied to you. I lied. No, no, I just totally Sean lied to you. Abandoned. <laughs> I'm not interested in you at all. You, you are, are playing on behalf of Justin Eltoft. Okay. Justin, you and me, we're going to make this thing happen. Together. Yes. Caitlin Hoffmeister, you are playing on behalf of Sean McClellan and Jason Archibald. I I'm interested in you, Sean and Jason. Archibald. You're interested in? Well, because you weren't interested in Sean anymore. Oh. <laughs> so I'm, I'm interested in you guys. Sorry, Jason. <laughs> see you, Sean. Okay, so both of you start off with a thousand SciShow bucks. Okay. Uh, I'm leaving. Sci That's good bucks enough for me. <laughs> I don't need any more SciShow bucks. That's a lot. <laughs> That's a, is that a forfeit? So I. Caitlin wins! <laughs> Yay! Yay, Sean! And Archibald. I gotta stay for Justin. Are they okay. bucks or points? Last time it they were points, right? We should change it every time. SciShow okay. salary. No, <laughs> you don't. SciShow salaries. Salaries. <laughs> you have uh, a thousand SciShow salaries each. Perfect. Uh, each time you answer a question correctly, you will win some number that I will make up uh, in that moment. And uh, whoever has the most salaries at the end of the game will win a randomly selected piece of DFTBA merchandise for their people that they uh, are playing for. What was Justin the or Sean. Used? Or I have sh interested in. Yes. <laughs> uh, I, have, the I have Sean and who? Uh, Sean and Jason. Sorry, I'm not cheating. <laughs> There's no, no <laughs> answers on this one anyway. Just Sean and Jason. I keep being like, don't use your mic to point things out. It's going to sound <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Oh, and our very lovely assistant, Stefan Chin, will show you what our uh, lucky contestants could take home today. Oh, well, thanks, Michael. Our fabulous contestants today will have a chance to win this Pizza John mouse pad or this wind tunnel tested Pizza John Frisbee. Back to you. Okay, our first question in honor of SciShow Space oh God. is about astronomy. Main sequence stars mm. are stars that are currently fusing hydrogen atoms to form helium in their cores. With that in mind, which one of these is a main sequence star? Is it a white dwarf, a red dwarf, or a brown dwarf? Mm. Hank Green. I don't know, but I'm going to say red Dwarf. You are correct! Oh. The red dwarf is the only one of these three that is in the main sequence of its development, fusing hydrogen into helium. They are cool stars, smaller than the sun, and are thought to be the most common type of star in our galaxy. White dwarfs are former main sequence stars that burned through their hydrogen and helium and went on to fuse heavier elements, but were not hot enough to fuse the carbon in their cores, so they collapsed. And brown dwarfs, meanwhile, are so-called failed stars that weren't able to achieve the sustained fusion necessary to become a main sequence star to begin with. For what it's worth, astronomers will be the first to admit that the whole dwarf nomenclature for stars is kind of confusing. Most people associate the term with collapsed or failed stars, but the term was actually introduced in the 1800s to describe stars with less luminosity. So by this logic, all main sequence stars are considered dwarfs, including the sun, which is classified as a yellow dwarf. Okay, round two. Okay. True or false? Is this also astronomy? No. Okay. <laughs> oh, damn it. Our second row this week is dedicated to defending the honor of sharks uh, in light of the hype and hyperbole of Discovery Channel's recent Shark Week. Um, so let's take a more fact-based look at sharks, beginning with our first true or false question. All sharks need to keep swimming in order to breathe. I'm not sure who got there first. Our fingers definitely ran into yeah. each other. Cut your nails. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't know. I, th I think I felt you were there I first. Hank I think I finished. Okay. I think that's why I hit your false. nails because I tried to get in there. Um, that is indeed false. 
Woo! It is indeed false, although it's true for a few kinds of sharks. All sharks do need to have water moving over their gills in order to breathe, but many species like nurse, bullhead, and tiger sharks can breathe while resting by opening and closing their mouths to force water across their gills. This is called buckle pumping. But some species aren't capable of doing this, so they have to use a technique known as ram ventilation, swimming with their mouths open. The sharks that use ram ventilation include the great white, mako, and whale sharks, all of whom have to keep moving in order to breathe, which must be downright exhausting. <clears throat> Next, we're going to talk size. If you've watched uh, Discovery Channel, you may have seen a, a certain documentary claiming that we've found Megalodon swimming around in the ocean or whatever, which is uh, very false. It false. died uh, like <laughs> two million years ago. Very false. Um, <clears throat> um, but today, the largest species of shark is the Great White. She was there first. False. False. It is indeed false. Woo! Yeah. Ooh, let's give Caitlin 100 movie. celeries. Oh. Ah, 1100. The largest shark is the whale shark, which has been known to get as large as 13 meters. But they're just docile filter feeders, and scuba divers have been known to swim with them. The second largest shark species is the basking shark, which grows to about 12 meters. I mean, great white sharks are great and everything, but the largest of them are females measuring about 5 meters. Meh. But all of these pale in comparison to the megalodon, which reached a length of 18 meters and had an estimated body mass about three times the size of a whale shark. When it comes to the great white to megalodon comparison, a University of California biologist recently told National Geographic, and I quote, a great white is is about the size of the penis of a male megalodon. <sighs> okay, on the subject of shark reproduction, true or false, sharks can lay eggs. Oh, I don't actually know the question answer to that question. <laughs> I love that you hit the buzzer, and now you don't want to answer. <laughs> I'm going to say, that's a weird question, so I'm going to say true. It is true. That's what okay. I would have said. Sharks are fish, after all, so about a third of shark species do indeed lay eggs. After releasing their egg cases, mother sharks will deposit them in the seafloor or in rock crevices. To help keep them anchored, some species, like the horn shark and the Port Jackson shark, produce egg cases that harden into corkscrew shapes that look like big drill bits. Meanwhile, the other two-thirds of sharks give birth to live young, producing litters that range in size from two to as many as a hundred pups. But in the case of the sand tiger shark, only the two largest embryos that were fertilized are born because they eat all of their siblings in the womb. <laughs> Round three is double or nothing, where you can double or nothing. Yes. You can wager as much of your winnings as you want based on the topic. If you wager it all and you're right, you double your money. If you're wrong, you lose whatever you wagered. Okay. Okay. Your <clears throat> topic is engineering. Place your bets. Okay. We may or may not be back after these commercial messages. Because sometimes there's not a mid-roll. <laughs> <laughs> A funny thing happened during the commercial break. Don't worry about it. How many celeries have you guys wagered? Oh, do we tell? I don't know. I don't think you. That's not okay. Jeopardy I mean, works. I don't want to yeah. know how many celebrities you. Lose I mean, in. we're not totally stealing this from Jeopardy. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> Are you ready for the question? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Internal combustion is used to describe any engine where a fuel, an oxidizer for the fuel, and the products of their combustion are the fluids that do the work. This is different from external combustion, like a steam engine, where energy is applied to the working fluid by some outside source. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. which of these devices oh. uses external combustion? Oh, is it a solid fuel rocket, a hydroelectric dam, a nuclear power plant, or a fuel cell? Did you say nuclear? Nuclear? That says donut. Mm. Donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? We're ready. ready. Reveal your answers. Oh no! Who's right? 
Hank Green, you just doubled your salaries. <laughs> no! Oh, 2400 to zero. Today's winner, ladies and gentlemen, oh, yeah. is Hank Green, I'm who is so playing sorry. for someone, but my notes have been thrown all over Justin. the place. Who did Why that? For Justin. For you, Justin. I've made it, it said nuclear donut plant before I made it better. Mm. Nuclear donut, donut plant. plant. Congratulations, Hank Green. Congratulations, Justin. Uh, thanks for joining us on this SciShow quiz show. If you'd like to be played for by one of our lovely Contestants. Players. Who's the real contestant here? I don't know. What, is a con what does contestant mean? Mm. Okay, it means let's you're break in a it contest. down. Do it in Latin. What I'm trying to say is go to, go to yeah. subbable.com slash scishow right. and get some you perks. You can get this tie. You can get this tie. Not this tie. You can get a tie that looks like this. This one's mine. <laughs> And uh, be sure to check out Caitlin Hoffmeister on SciShow Space. And of course, don't forget to go to youtube.com slash SciShow and subscribe. Yay.